Today we're gonna to be talking about the overhead position, what's going on in the shoulder. We're gonna be talking about the anatomy and the kinesiology behind this overhead position and why. Um, you know, I've recently put out videos that are tutorials on how to do a chin up, how to do active hangs, passive hangs, that kind of thing. So what is happening in the shoulder joint when you're doing these exercises? What is the anatomy? What is the kinesiology, the science behind it? Let's check it out in today's episode. Real quick, my name is Anthony Davis. This is Shapeshift Wellness, where we explore the science behind fitness, yoga, and meditation. If you like that sort of thing, please do subscribe to my channel. Helps me out um, and give this video a like. All right, now let's explore some anatomy. So here we are, we're looking at the back side, or we would say the posterior view of uh, this person's back and their shoulder. I've included a few muscles that attach to the shoulder, but just know there are a lot more muscles that, that go on here. So this right here, uh, I've just highlighted in green, is the scapula, that's your shoulder blade. And again, we're looking at this person from behind. And the shoulder blade, the scapula, connects to the uh, rib cage via a bunch of muscles. There isn't a proper joint there. So in order to stabilize through the shoulder, in order to transmit force from your hand through your arm and then into your the center of your body and, and then throughout wherever, maybe you're doing some exercise on the floor, if you're carrying a weight, then it has to transmit from your hand to your shoulder, to your um, skeleton, down all the way down to the feet and into the ground. And in order to transmit force, it has to go through all these muscles because there isn't a proper joint, which means that it is more important than pretty much any other joint, really, um, to have good muscular strength and control and coordination in an overhead position. Now, an overhead position is a very difficult position because a lot of these muscles um, get a little bit tight just because they're not used to doing overhead motion. Most of us don't do overhead types of motion. We don't hang or do, um, if we do do pull-ups, then we tend to not hang at the bottom so most people will kind of, they'll, um, they pull up and then they let down, but they don't completely straighten uh, their elbow and completely get into full flexion of the shoulder joint. So those tissues, because you are telling your body that you don't need to be a, a you know, capable of a full overhead range of motion. You're telling your body not to adapt to that and then your tissues comply with that. They decide, oh, we don't need to be extensible. We don't need to be basically stretchy enough. And it tells your nervous system, hey, we don't need to let go of muscles. We don't need to relax muscles enough to achieve a full overhead uh, range of motion. So now let's explore which muscles, um, what I just explained, the neurology and the, the fascia and how the fascia adapts, um, which muscles is this happening in? And keep in mind, everything is kind of a connected chain. So if I say, well, we're talking about the latissimus dorsi, well, realize that the latissimus dorsi really connects through a long line of muscles. And so uh, up and down the chain, there can be these same effects. But generally speaking, if we look at the latissimus dorsi, let's, let's just go ahead and zoom out for your viewing pleasure and just realize where this muscle is. So here now we're looking at this person from the front. So we get this giant uh, muscle on the back here and we wanna see that it wraps around and connects to the front side of the shoulder. So now we're looking at the front of the right shoulder and you can see that the latissimus dorsi connects right here, okay? And it's just this little, um, this little attachment point for a really, really big, strong muscle. And what this muscle does is it internally rotates the shoulder and it extends the shoulder and it adducts the shoulder as well. Um, and depending on position, uh, maybe some other things, but mainly what it does is those motions. So let's actually look at what these motions look like. So let's see um, internal rotation or we, we could call that medial rotation. Okay, so here we are, and what we see is as we, boom, right? So just notice that when the, um, the muscle highlights, it's, uh, it's contracting, okay? So we're looking again from the backside. 
So when it contracts, it internally rotates. So it pulls your shoulder inward and it internally rotates the glenohumeral joint. So just FYI, if you're trying to stretch the latissimus dorsi, then when your arm is overhead, you need to externally rotate in order to stretch it. So the other action, main action that it performs is this, shoulder extension. So again, we're looking at this person from behind. When the muscle contracts, it turns yellow in this uh, app. And by the way, this is the Complete Anatomy 21 app. Uh, you get that question all the time. So what it does is it pulls your arm behind you. So if you need to stretch it, then you need to flex the shoulder. So if we were to look at shoulder flexion, if we were to look at shoulder flexion, um, then we would see that when the arm gets overhead, now I don't have the latissimus dorsi um, uh, pulled up right now, it, it disappeared when I pulled up shoulder flexion. So um, just bear with me here and imagine that we've got that big muscle again. So now when we've reached overhead, we've stretched that muscle. Not only that, but we've also achieved upward rotation of the scapula. So if we come back down, arm reaching down, the scapula is sort of drawn back towards the midline and downward. But when you reach overhead, the shoulder blade, the scapula must go up, out and forward. So. Again, let's just watch this a couple of times because uh, some people don't uh, know this. So we're looking at the back of the right shoulder. So when you reach up, the shoulder blade goes up, forward, and out, okay? Not down and back. So if you want to achieve this position here, which, by the way, um, is going to if we zoom in at this subacromial space, I hope you can see that, then when the shoulder blade moves up and forward, we generally have more space in the subacromial space. Now, this is really just important to say, you know, not to get scared if you don't, you know, quote unquote, properly use your shoulder blade. Um, generally speaking, as long as you're not actively trying to depress the shoulder blades while you're overhead, you're gonna be fine. But just know that if your shoulder blades can really just relax and go up, forward and out, then you're gonna have more comfortable position long term um, in your overhead ranges of motion. So a lot of times what we want to do is we want to just get into this overhead position and literally hang out and just grab a bar and hang because all that's doing is it's pulling um, these tissues into this upwardly rotated overhead position. It's stretching the latissimus dorsi. It's stretching even the uh, triceps because you would see that the triceps right here um, actually this app doesn't really show it well, but the triceps when you're overhead, the triceps here are pretty much continuous fascia with the latissimus dorsi. So you've got kind of one long line of connective tissue and that all gets to lengthen out. And the only way that fascia uh, or connective tissue is able to adapt and really get used to a, a position is, um, you know, creep is ligamentous creep or uh, tendon uh, tendons can creep any kind of soft tissue can creep anything elastic can creep and what creep is is that over time these uh, tissues that you know they kind of stretch out and then they start to get a little bit looser basically okay now if you spend enough time in that position and you teach your tissues that you need to be able to achieve an overhead uh, range of motion then they will accommodate long term rather than just having a short sort of elastic deformation they will have a plastic deformation which is in in this case is what you're after you're trying to get a little bit of plastic deformation of the tissues that means that your tissues are stretchy that's all that means. So if you want overhead range of motion, if you want your latissimus dorsi and your, your um, the uh, long head of the triceps and your teres major and the rear deltoid and your uh, levator scap, which has to actually stretch weirdly, this muscle has to stretch when you reach overhead because of the spin, the spin of the upward rotation in uh, overhead ranges of motion. If you want that to happen, you you really just have to spend more time doing it. Okay. And if you're using variations like eccentric lowers with a full passive hang at the end, then you're strengthening the muscles that control the range of motion and you're getting the benefit of plastic adaptation of the tissues. 
So your fascia adapts to become stretchier. Your nervous system um, trusts that you have control because you're lowering eccentrically um, or you're pausing and hanging at the end or you're doing active hangs or you're doing scapular pull-ups, etc. So if you're doing all of these things in combination, then all of these tissues, neuromuscularly, so your motor control is willing to let go of the tissues a bit. Um, neuromuscularly, you're also gaining more strength, motor unit uh, recruitment, developing more strength in the tissues. You're going to hypertrophy in the in the process, which is weird because you get strength and hypertrophy and more range of motion. So usually, uh, I think um, people that don't know any better uh, generally would think that you know being flexible and being strong are two ends of a spectrum but they're not you can be strong in a uh, in an end range of motion now we don't need to push shoulder flexion to extremes we don't need to go beyond 180 degrees really i wouldn't advise it but if you but you know that good 180 degrees I think is a reasonable benchmark. Um, you don't have to get quite there, but if it's your goal to do a lot of overhead range of motion long term for the rest of your life, then you need to practice it on a regular basis. And these are some of the target tissues I've highlighted here as well as the capsule of the actual joint will get used to torque and rotation. So this is why I would, uh, now in other videos, I actually, if you go to my website, I have a free um, course that I've used some of my previous YouTube videos uh, to explain overhead anatomy in greater depth. So go to my website and sign up for the free area to get um, access to that. And I explain what torque is in the capsule and why um, when you reach overhead, you have to externally rotate the arm in the shoulder, okay? And that torques the capsule. But if your capsule is not stretchy enough, literally the capsule around the joint itself, the synovial membrane and the joint capsule, if they are not stretchy enough, then you will never achieve that overhead range of motion. So when I advise people to reach overhead, I advise you to supinate the hands. So supinate, meaning grab the bar that you're hanging from with your hands facing you, okay? Supinate like here, have a cup of soup, right? And this is going to externally rotate, torque the shoulder, stretch the latissimus dorsi more than if you were internally rotated, and really get you used to this full overhead range of motion with no problems and tons of space uh, for long-term overhead strength and mobility. I hope this helps. I hope I didn't ramble too much. Um, let me know if you like this, like the video, share it with your friends. I'll see you next time. Peace.